All right, hey everybody, it's Jonathan. Welcome to another week of the lacrossegoalietips.com weekly Facebook group, uh, Facebook calls, question Q&A, parent Q&A, coach Q&A, lots of stuff going on today. Didn't mean for that to rhyme, but it did. Uh, so hey everybody, welcome and uh, welcome to everybody kind of checking in as we go. Uh, got a lot of stuff going on today and as usual, I have more tabs open and less, uh, <laughs> I'm just like clicking things together. Hey everybody. Hey Elaine, Elaine Miller, son with a big head off of college. Glad he's got a new helmet. For those of you that were in the group this week, fall on, on uh, Elaine's son, Darius, who's off on his first year of school. He's got a big melon and he got that new, he's got a new Cascade helmet, correct? I think, right, Elaine? Um, that's awesome. Good to see. Uh, Jonathan Cooper Redfern. Hello, sir. Helen Lang Evans. Hello. Uh, Mike Tupin and Melanie Grinstein. Hello. Hey guys. Good to see you. Uh, Helen, I got your note too about your son. Uh, so Helen's uh, son is playing football this fall. And, um, you know, one of the things I recommend for all my goalies is that, you know, one of the biggest things is going to improve your goaltending ability is getting in the weight room. And her son was a little bit skeptical, but has been in the weight room for a bit picked up his stick and just like I promised, uh, realized like, whoa, I'm, I'm stronger than I was before. So that's really, really, really good to see. So I'm glad that, uh, I'm glad that happened. Uh, Helen, really good stuff. Hey, Mike Tupin. Hello, sir. Um, and, uh, so good, good stuff. Uh, really, really, um, uh, I, I don't lie, do I, Helen? <laughs> so, um, hey, a lot of good stuff. So when you check in, do me a favor, just uh, let me know where you're from. Uh, you know, Let me know where you're, you're checking in from. We got East Coast, West Coast. We got Middle of the Coast. We've got... Um, uh, we've got goalies and parents from all over North America, which is really, really cool. Uh, so everything from both coasts of Canada down in the States, those of you guys know I'm from Boston, born and raised, but I've been in, living in Canada for a very long time. Um, so I have to say I feel more Canadian than I do American at times, which is always good when people start talking politics, that's for sure. But, um, uh, so, but, uh, we won't be talking about that today. So, um, Hey, a couple things I just want to start with. Uh, so a lot of great stuff. You know, our, our goalies, Brian Millsap. Hello, sir. How are you? Um, uh, you know, we've got our goalies playing fall ball and, uh, and I'm getting feedback. Uh, some good, some not so good. Uh, you know, as now kids are getting ready for fall tournaments, um, you know, and fall recruiting events. Uh, you know, and so one of the things I just want to talk about, just real quick, and you guys can leave it in the comments or you can private message me. That's cool too. Is um, uh, you know, the, the, what's your sense of, you know, when you go to these fall recruiting events, uh, are they worth it or are you getting more bang for the buck out of your summer events? Uh, because there is kind of a bit of an undercurrent that the fall tournaments are not as good as the summer. Um, and so that's, I know that's a fact, um, you know, but, uh, but I just want to get your take on it. So, um, so definitely leave me a, leave me a comment, uh, saying hi. So, um, and let me know how that, how that went for you. Um, so a couple things. So inside for our lacrosse goal university members, um, inside lacrosse goal university, this I just did a new video for our drill vault. So one of the parts inside lacrosse goal university is this kind of ever expanding. It's not huge, but it's this ever expanding uh, video kind of database where I take a video that is circulating the internet. It's been you know, uh, you know people see it on YouTube and they wonder, hey, does this work? And I basically take that video and I give you kind of my, my advice, you know, what's good about it, what's maybe not so good. And so this week uh, I did a video that was originally posted back in 2012 of uh, Kip Turner, who is, uh, who at the time was the goalie for Virginia is now an assistant coach at Virginia, um, working with the goalies and the faceoff guys. And it was done by Maverick. So it's super hypey. It's only a couple minutes long, but it's Kip Turner doing a goalie warm up. And so I basically go through that video and I, and I talk about like, what's good, what's not so good. Um, and what you can take out of it for your goalie, what maybe you should probably avoid. Um, and what is flat out probably wrong, but, uh, Kip was a good goalie. Um, I like how compact he is, how athletic he is. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of good stuff out of that video, but there's also some stuff that I think needs some explanation. And that's what I, that's what I do there. So, uh, David Ammenhauser, good to see you. Scott Stratton. Hello guys. Uh, welcome. Um, David Ammenhauser, great post, uh, or great comment, uh, this week on, uh, so the Noxy rules, uh, for chest protectors, as those of you have known me for a while. I'm not a fan. I think the Noxy certification on chest protectors is a bit of a cash grab. I think in reality, I think one of the things that it's, 
more for the shoulder pads for the rest of the field players it's kind of like well if we got to put a noxy chest pad on all these shoulder pads we may as well do it for the goalies but the thing is for the goalies the goalie chest protectors in my opinion lack shoulder protection especially for young and new lacrosse goalies and that really disappoints me like really 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 disappoints me and david ammenhauser had a nice comment on that this week so i really appreciate that um uh, so a couple other things. Uh, so today, uh, just as after this at uh, twelve thirty my time, uh, two thirty uh, Eastern, I'll be on my raising high performance athletes, high performing athletes podcast. We're going to be talking about the words you use, the words you use as a parent, the words you use as an athlete, uh, how that limits you, um, and how it can flat out actually just hurt you. So I want to, uh, I want to invite everybody. If you're not a member of my raising high performing athletes group, uh, head on over there on Facebook and, uh, just put in a quick little, uh, um, uh, request and we'll get you in. All right. And then, uh, also I've been working on my lacrosse goalie book that I'm hoping to have launched by the new year. Uh, it's going to be an epic book. It's not going to be some ebook. It's not going to be some dinky little thing. Um, it's going to be a real book and it's going to be, uh, the Bible of lacrosse goaltending. That's really what I want it to be. Um, and, uh, and so today, so I was working this morning on the concept of a goalie's shot library. So just to touch on it real quick, you know, I want you to understand, I want you to help your goalies to understand that every shot that they have taken on them, whether it's in their backyard or whether it's on a field, whether it's in practice, in a game, or it's in their head, they're building a shot library. And that's really an understanding of what the ball looks like leaving a player's stick. Now, what's really cool, what I love that we live in this world of the internet is that, you know, with Instagram and, and all this stuff, we're seeing like really cool, um, you know, creative stuff like uh, John Grant Jr. For those of you guys that may or may not know, he plays for the Denver Outlaws in the MLL. He is a Canadian lacrosse icon. He is a lacrosse icon icon. He's 44 years old and he's actually a player coach for the Denver Outlaws. Well, in this in the final of the uh, MLL championship this uh, couple weeks ago, he scored three goals and 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 they're they're super creative. One was one-handed, right? And one was a very dinky behind the back shot, like just a little like floater as he came across that he came from the left side of the crease, came from behind, drove the defenseman back got the defenseman leaning, got the goalie leaning, and just let this little dink of a back you know, behind the back shot, and it just totally caught the goalie off guard. And, and so what I love is that we're seeing all this creativity, but what I'm encouraging all our parents, our coaches, and our goalies to understand is that you also have to be equally creative, right? If, if, if a goalie is being trained by a coach, and we're going to touch on this a little bit later, if all you're doing is just the rote, old school lacrosse goalie stuff, you're going to get left in the dirt. And unfortunately, some of the more popular like camps and clinics and things like that, that's all they're doing too, is they're just rehashing old stuff. And so what I encourage with all my goalies is to be creative. And we do that through Lacrosse Goal University. And uh, But I want you to encourage that. So today, when I was writing about Shot Library, it really occurred to me that you know our goalies are developing a library of 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 shots of shooters and uh, and and that's really what the goalie is developing. So they're not just in the cage getting shot on, right? It's not just a ball after ball after ball because if that were the case, you could shoot a ball out of a out of a jugs machine, you know, like which is a, you know, for those of you that may not know, it's like, you know, it's like a, a it's an old school name for a a baseball like pitching machine. That, that was called the jugs machine, right? So, so if your goalie could get better as being a goalie, they could get shot at by a tennis ball machine, or you could put a lacrosse ball in a cannon or a potato launcher, whatever. And they, and you could make them better shooting that ball out of a potato launcher instead of a stick. But that's not true. Goalies need to soften the eyes. They need to, they need to see, they need to see the shooter, the whole picture in order to get an idea of what's, where this ball is going to come from and how it's going to arrive. Right. And so that's, what's really, really important. So our goalies need to understand that. So uh, I'm looking forward to writing more about that in the book. And so, if, um, uh, yeah, so anyway, that was that. So, uh, Joel Rose, hello, sir. Greg Barnhart or Bernhardt. Hello. Um, Alex Muskos. Hello. Uh, 
David Amenhauser, the goal John Grant Jr. scored behind the back was crazy. Now, I don't like to use the word crazy uh, just to pick on it a little bit, Dave, because it's, it's, it, we, I want our goalies, and this kind of goes into my conversation later today on my other podcast, but, um, you know, I, I want our goalies to go, like a goalie's got to understand that they've got to be able to stop every shot, right? They really, really need to have that belief, right? And we all know that some shots are more difficult than others, right? But it's a level, when you when we say that it's crazy, it's almost like it's unattainable. It's like, that's impossible. And, and I don't... It, I don't necessarily believe that because what we're going to see is in the, the lacrosse goalie of the future that I'm all about, that I'm promoting, is that is that goalie is going to be ready for that. That goalie is going to read that, oh, wait, he's dropping. I, I can't see his left hand. I can't see his bottom hand. That's probably going to come over the top here. And instead of leaning, he's that goalie is going to make that save like it's no big deal. So uh, so it was an amazing shot. It was really cool. And it was creative. But, but, but if the shooters are getting creative, we've got to encourage our goalies to up there their creativity in their save uh, ability as well, okay? Um, so unfortunately, it was against the cannons. Yes, that is that is totally true. Um, so, But it was a good day altogether. Um, uh, so listen, let's get into today's questions. I've got, um, I've got a couple good ones here. Uh, the first one came from Jeff. I'm, gonna pr- I'm, I'm not going to pronounce this right, but Jeff Hoddy, H-O-D-D-E, Jeff Hud, Jeff Hode, uh, Hodidi. Um, uh, I'm usually really good with names, but that one, that double D is kind of confusing me. Uh, he's from Summit, New Jersey, and he was asking, he was like, listen, can a hockey goalie make the transition to becoming a lacrosse goalie? And the fast answer to this is yes. Uh, the shorter answer is hell yes. Um, and, and here's why. I believe so. So when it comes to the lacrosse goalie position, I believe that the lacrosse goalie position has really gotten confused over the years. It's really turned into like a midi in the cage. And what I mean by that is that the goalie in the cage is is almost wearing less equipment than everybody else in the field is supposed to be. Like we got a helmet and a throat guard. We've got this dinky little tampon of a chest protector. Pardon me, but it's you know it's just kind of ridiculous. Um, it's ridiculous when baseball when baseball catchers wear uh, chest protectors that are bigger than what we're wearing in the cage in lacrosse. That just blows my mind. Um, and and so so we're in this six by six net. We're in a bigger net. We're wearing less gear. And the excuse is that oh, we need to be able to run outside the crease. Well, yeah, but that doesn't happen. As you know, it's to me that doesn't happen enough to warrant a a goalie wearing like nothing on their legs, Um, because we're missing the opportunity to make more saves. And this is where, as a hockey goalie, um, I was a hockey goalie in high school, and I actually became a hockey goalie kind of by mistake. I remember this was in eighth grade, the captain of the eighth grade hockey team at Thayer Academy, where I went to school in Braintree, Massachusetts, called me up and said, "Hey, we heard you're a hockey goalie," and I was like, "No." I'm a lacrosse goalie. And he goes, but you play hockey, right? And I did. I played forward. I, I skated. Um, I wasn't very good. Um, but my my but he said, Do you, how do you we don't have a goalie? Do you want to be our goalie? And I basically said, listen, if you guys provide me the equipment, because I knew my parents probably wouldn't want to shell out money for hockey equipment at that time. Um, I said, if you guys shell out the gear, I'll I'll play. And so that's exactly what I did. But what hockey goaltending taught me, all right, and this is what's really important about this, is that what ta- what hockey goaltending taught me about the goalie position was that, for, and, and by the way, for those of you that don't know, a hockey goal is six feet wide by four feet tall. So a lacrosse goal is just two feet on top of that, right? So, the, but the interesting thing about hockey, right, is that the puck is basically you know, 99% of the time is leaving from the ice. Okay. It's leaving from one plane. Um, and, and so, so as the puck comes closer to you, it is like, you're looking down on this thing. As the puck goes further out, you're able to come out, cut down angles. But one of the things that I realized about being a hockey goalie was I realized what it felt like to be really protected and to shift from being a puck catcher to a puck blocker, which is primarily what goalies in hockey are, right? The equipment has evolved so that they can 
not just catch the puck, but deflect the puck, right? Now, granted, they have a catching glove, kind of like a lobster mitt, right? Um, and they can catch things, but they're really primarily catching stuff on one side of their body, right? They're not reaching across their body to try to catch everything, right? So if a so if I'm a I'm, I was a goal like a right-handed goalie, I, ca- I held the stick in my right hand, my catching glove was my left hand. Um, if the puck went to my like my 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 right foot, I wasn't reaching down with my glove trying to get it, and that's always confused me about lacrosse. Right, it really has, and I've been around this sport since like, since like 1985. You know, like it's 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 not like this is a new concept. I just I just I've always had some confusion with the fact that we're just trying to catch everything in lacrosse. And what I believe 100% is that we are going to see the lacrosse goalie of the future is going to make more saves using their body. Right? They're going to be using their feet and their shins and their knee and their left testicle and maybe their right testicle too. Right, They're going to be using their off-stick elbow and their glove. Um, and what we're really hampered by here is we're hampered by a very small sport and comparatively, right? You know, and people say like lacrosse isn't small. I'm like, you know what? In a lot of ways, it, it kind of is. Um and then we take the goalie position, which is an even a smaller slice of that already small pie. And, you know, we're seeing, you know, we see a goalie glove is like basically a, a field glove with maybe a thumb on it, right? With maybe a protective thumb on it. But we're not seeing a glove that's built with more finger protection or more protection on the back side of that, that hand um, so that we can use that bottom hand as almost like a blocker, right? And and this is where, you know, this is the saying that I tell all my goalies is that, you know, like, listen, you signed up to play the lacrosse goalie position. And when you signed up for that, you basically agreed that you're going to put something, something, not just the stick, something in front of the ball before it crosses the goal line. That's the deal. That's what we signed up for as lacrosse goalie. So, when you when you when you agree with me on that right when you when you when you look me in the eyes and you say yes i took the lacrosse goalie oath i signed that lacrosse goalie manifesto which by the way is in my lacrosse goalie cheat sheets if you don't have them go to lacrossegoalietips.com get the cheat sheets read through that you'll see the manifesto but the but if you agree with me that a lacrosse goalie's job is to get something in front of the ball before it crosses the goal line, then you have to agree with me that when a ball is being shot six inches away from that bottom hand, like that bottom hand, and they we, we take that, that glove out basically away to, in order to get our top hand there, and then we miss the ball, Right, the Nash, the goal that won the the PLL final this year. This is a perfect example of this. Right, that ball was going to their off stick hip, right, the off stick glove, and instead of just just basically extending that that off stick or that that uh, bottom hand to the ball, the goalie tries to rotate their stick in front of the ball and they miss it. Right, and so so. That doesn't make sense to me. So I believe, and one thing that I teach my goalies is to understand, like, listen, there's a point in time where the shot is too close and too fast for you to get your stick to everything. So that's where we start to open up, like, okay, this is we're going to save this thing with our foot. We're going to save it with our knee. We're going to save it with our bottom hand, right? Um, we're going to get our head in front of it, whatever, right? Um, and so hockey goaltending teaches you that. Hockey goaltending teaches you this understanding of like, you know, wait a second, if that ball is coming to my five hole, which is between the legs, I need to drop, I need to get my knees there. Because as and that's while you're also trying to get your stick there, but I'm trying to get my knees there. Why? Because I signed up to get something in front of that ball. Right. So if that makes sense to you, do me a favor, leave me a little yes or something. And if you got if you want me to clarify it, leave me a question uh, in the comments. But really, I believe the lacrosse goalie of the future is going to be making more saves uh, with parts of their body than they currently do. So I don't know what necessarily that's going to be like in terms of a number. You know, like let's say a goalie's you know makes fifty percent of their saves right now. Well, those are all primarily with the stick. We're going to start to see like 
you know, 5%, maybe 10% of those, of those saves, sorry, not of those saves, but in addition to those saves, right? Does that make sense? Like I'm not trying to replace saves that I would normally make with my stick, although sometimes you might, um, but we're going to increase the save percentage of the goalie because uh, they're going to realize that, yeah, you know what? I got to put my elbow on this. I can't get my stick my, all the way across my body to make that save, but I can get my left elbow there or my right elbow, whatever it is, right? So that's really important. So, so um, as a hockey goalie, um, a hockey goalie understands how to use their body, how to block the ball. Um, they also know how to cut down the angle. So when you watch a hockey goalie, and I recommend, you may not be a hockey fan, but watch a game, okay? Watch a game and, and see what the goalie does as the puck moves itself, moves around the zone. So as the puck gets down towards goal line extended, the goalie is going to slough back in the cage, closer to the, the goal line, closer to the pipes, right? And he's gonna look to take up as much space as he can, right? And then as that puck gets passed out to the blue line, right, where the, def where the defensemen of the other team have like slap shots, that goalie will come out to the top of the crease. And that's something that I also preach is that when we have time and room shots, right? So a great example of this in the PLL is when uh, long poles come down and they're just winding up from like 15, 12, 12, 15 yards, right? Or 20 to 15 yards or so. They're just, just, it's just a rope, right? And this is where what I see is I see goalies who are afraid. I, even at the pro level, I see goalies who are afraid, right? And then I see goalies who are trying to just react to the ball. It's like, you're going to shoot the ball and I'm just going to try to react and make a save with this stick in my hand. The lacrosse goalie of the future is going to come out. They're going to attack the shooter. And I don't mean they're going to run straight at him, but they're going to come to the top of that crease and they are going to now almost forget like they have a stick in their hand and they're going to basically start to use more of their body to make the save, right? They're going to use, uh, they're going to, and, and to do that though, they've going to, they're going to have to feel protected because right now, if a goalie, if a pro level goalie stuck out their off like their, let's say I'm a righty goalie and they stuck out their left elbow, they would shatter their elbow, right? They wouldn't play for the rest of the season. It would just be too much damage. But this is where, if you think about it, it's like, well, what the hell is that goalie doing then? Because a hockey goalie would do that, you know, because he's protected. Why? He's protected, right? It's easy, right? So this is what I love about hockey goaltending, okay? Uh, in terms of how it helps a lacrosse goalie. Um, and for, I get, you know, every year or so for, for, um, uh, for Jeff, who wrote this question, you know, Jeff, so, you know, every year I'll get a, a, a dad who is a hockey goalie, but hasn't played lacrosse. And now his son or daughter is a, is a lacrosse goalie wonders if everything's okay. And I'm like, dude, you're like 80% of the way there. Right. Uh, and, um, and so it's, uh, yeah. So, so, you know, it's funny. I feel like people are coming out of the closet when it comes to lacrosse goaltending because they'll write me and they'll say like, I'm just floored that the goalies don't wear any equipment. And I'm like, you know what? I'm still floored, and I encourage every program to mandate that their goalies need to wear shin pads, thigh pads, shoulder shoulder caps, like upper arm guard, chest, in addition to all the other stuff, um, up till about like gr you know grade nine. That was that's my recommendation for the majority of programs. Is just we just got to make it mandatory. Why? Because one, we're going to keep the kids safe, but but more importantly, we're going to help them learn faster. Right? We're going to help them be better goalies quicker. So Jeff, thanks for the question. A couple of comments here. Uh, Joel Rose, yeah, goalies have made a lot of crazy saves too. Yep. Rick Reinecker, hello, sir. Um, uh, do you encourage goalies to wear elbow pads? Hey, Rick Reinecker, that's a great question. And you know what? My aunt, This is, okay, here's the deal. Most lacrosse elbow pads are meant to protect the backside of the elbow. Right, like if you're running away from me and I go to slash at you, that pad is really designed to stop that. That being said, though, um, in ice hockey, uh, there are elbow pads that have a cuff that comes over the forearm, like below the elbow, and then there's and then there's a pad that co covers up behind the arm. Okay, um, and then there's a joint. Right, there's a joint that covers the outer side of the elbow. 
I encourage that type of pad. The problem with elbow pads like that for lacrosse goalies is they feel really heavy. So wait a second, let me just back up here. The traditional lacrosse pad feels really heavy, but what we're trying to protect, okay, is we're trying to protect that outer, it's, I believe it's called the lateral epicondyle. For those, any, any medical folks watching me right now, you can, you can correct me, but I think it's called the lateral epicondyle. It's that bump on the outside of your elbow, right? Um, and the muscles that come down from there that attach there, if that gets hit, you kind of basically have a dead hand, right? And so, I, so do I recommend elbow pads? Yes, but I would say like, I would primarily cover the elbow of the bottom hand, not necessarily the top hand, right? So these are the compromises I want to make, right? So, um, uh, so for most part, if I'm a goalie, if I'm a righty goalie and I run out of the cage, I'm probably going to have the stick mostly, um, I, I'm going to have the, the bottom hand mostly on the stick. So, sorry guys, it's kind of hard to explain via like audio, but like when I run downfield, I'm not necessarily cradling the stick. The ball, the stick is in my left hand, right? So I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. Um, and then, so I'm mostly getting whacked. My potentially get whacked is on that left elbow. That's when I'm outside the cage. So I want to have that protected. When I'm inside the cage, if I'm going to wear an elbow, t elbow pad to improve my ability to save a ball, then I'm wearing one on my left elbow. Okay. Does that make sense? And I just want to make sure that it fits, that it's not super uncomfortable. Um, because that's the thing that's going to, um, that's the thing that's going to deter your goalie from wanting to wear, uh, an elbow pad. All right. So just keep that in mind, but that's where I would get you away from lacrosse elbow pads. And I would steer you to your local like hockey retailer, right. And looking for an elbow pad designed for a hockey player, not a lacrosse player. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, primarily, the reason being is because hockey players, their arms are typically bent, right? They're most, they're, they're, like the majority of the time they're bent. But in lacrosse, our, our arms are going all over the place. Right? Like, and, and, and our arms are also going above our head. Like our hands are going above our head. Um, we're reaching for stuff. In hockey, the puck is mostly on the ice, right? So everything is down. Um, so that's where a lot of people don't look to hockey gear for lacrosse players because it's in it's limiting when you reach your hands overhead but for a hockey for a lacrosse goalie i think there's a lot of advantage that protecting that bottom elbow all right um because like i said you know when a shot goes to your off stick side the closest thing you have to make that save is your you, that elbow right that hand that elbow okay so really good stuff um uh so Jonathan Cooper Redford, easier said than done. I know, Jonathan, I know. Uh, don't tell Lauren that. Uh, David Ammenhauser writes, next-gen stat for lacrosse broadcast. When the ball is released, it reports the probability of the shot going in, just like they track baseball outfielders' chance of catching the ball. I'd pay money to see that. Yeah, because we don't have that yet, right, David? That's that's. Uh, um, but I bet it would be pretty... Um, I'd be pretty high. Now, David makes a good comment here because we just need G-Form to make more of their highly mobile and protective gear that protects the front of the forearm, elbow, and bicep. Uh, so for those of you that may or may not know, so G-Form is a, is a company that's primarily in skateboarding and that genre. So a lot of our families, a lot of our goalies have their goalies wearing the G-Form um, pads. They're basically, if I could describe it, they're like a neoprene sleeve. Okay. Uh, with basically like plastic or gel that's, that's heat, um, heat welded to that pad. Right. So I'm a big fan of that. The, so the one thing about protection is that when we wear pads like that, they're like a second layer of skin. So if you get hit, they still can leave a bit of a bruise. Now that's okay when it's like your when it's like your shin, um, but when we start putting the neoprene sleeve over a joint like a knee or an elbow, that's when the athlete starts to feel kind of encumbered, right? And so that's something that you may want to just keep in mind. If your goalie starts to go like, oh, I don't like those. I like them here. I like them for my shin, but I don't like them over my knee. That may be why. I like the G-Form pads. 
the, the other thing though is that, so when you put it on your forearm, again, a small hand, a weaker hand, um, if it's for the girls and they're wearing a G-form sleeve, they might complain that it's too tight, right? And that's where what I what I like more there for an elbow pad is something that Velcros around because then it can be adjusted. And this is where, guys, what happens is when an athlete puts one on and they're dry, like they're not sweaty yet, that pad feels weird. But once they get a little sweat going and that pad is a little sticky to the skin, they can they can release the Velcro a little bit, but still get that pad's not going to slip. Right. So that's, that's something to consider as well. But David, thanks for that comment. That's really good. Um, uh, so Rick Reinecker, you're welcome. Okay. So next question. Um, this was about goalie sticks. So, um, I got a lot of questions about, uh, stick stringing this week. And so we have in, as part of our group, Rob Warren and, um, and for, and first and foremost, like guys, I want you to understand when I make recommendations for equipment or stick stringing or helmets or things like that, I don't take an affiliate commission. Like I don't, I don't get paid for that, any of that stuff. And the reason being is because everything is really personal and really individual. And I really, you know, for, for there's, there's guys out there with websites that are really primarily, they're filling a website full of information just so they can get commissions. And I don't do that, right? Like I just, I just don't, I don't like it. I don't do it. Um, and because I question when that information is given to me, it feels kind of tainted. So every recommendation I give you is really based out of a coach who wants your goalie, your athlete to get better, right? So that's where I come from. And I think it's important that everybody understands that. Um, so, so Rob Warren is our local, is our, is our, our stick string guru. We got a lot of families that have sent Rob sticks and they rave about it. What I wanted to talk about today is, is first and foremost is that, so, so a lot of families, they don't know how to string a stick, right? And I get it. It's really one of the few arts left in a sport, you know, like in football, nobody's like stringing up footballs, like on the side that's done by Franklin, you know? Um, but in lacrosse, like stringing a stick is still an art and it's part of the tradition of field lacrosse. You know, it really reminds you of kind of the native American wooden stick and the cat gut and the leather and all that stuff, right? That's still there, which is really, really cool. So if you don't know how to string a goalie stick, I get it. That's totally cool. A lot of people don't, but something to consider is that, um, a lot of my family, you know, a lot of, I would say not a lot, but a, a big portion of our families of dads or moms, they'll give it a go. And so, but to, before you get there though, what you really want to do is you want to get a goalie stick strung by someone who knows what they're doing. And that's where Rob Warren, uh, is, is really been our go-to guy for that. And, uh, there's other people out there that do it too, but what I would, what I would, um, what I would keep you from doing is thinking that, oh, my local lacrosse store strings goalie sticks or there's this dude at the back at Dick's Sporting Goods and he strings sticks, quote, Andy can do goalie sticks. That's not true, okay? When you get a goalie stick from a store, for those of you that you might have done that, that, that pocket has been strung like over in China and that stick has come over on a boat and it's gone through all these different weather changes, hot, cold, hot, cold. By the time it gets to North America and ends, lands on the shelf, that the sidewall lacing has all kind of have a bit of a memory in it now and the mesh does and it's really not ideal. When I go into a club to talk or, you know, when, when someone's brought me in and I'm looking at club sticks, it's usually what I see is I see goalie sticks with really shallow pockets, right? So, and, and that's like learning how to play golf with bad clubs, right? It's really, it makes, it makes something difficult even more difficult, right? So getting someone like Rob Warren and, and I, I just recommend reach out to Rob on Facebook or through the group. Um, a lot of our parents are, they're, they're sending a stick to him and he's shipping it back and it's, uh, and they're just, they're great. Right. So I totally recommend that. Um, why? Because, and just, you can start with one stick. Okay. So get one head strung. And then what I would recommend you do is I would recommend you get a mesh kit and you have your goalie learn how to basically replicate that pocket. Okay. Because I believe wholeheartedly that learning how to string a stick is a skill that every goalie should understand because as your goalie gets better, there are going to be games where 
you know, a, a string snaps, right? Or it's wet, like it rains and that pocket changes a little bit. And, you know, the only person that can really understand, you know, you can only make a change to that stick when you understand how it was strung, right? And, and so a lot of goalies go like, oh, you know, I just have this guy, I just find a guy on my team to string my stick. Well, what if there's no guy next year or no girl? Like, you know, like you're kind of, you're shit out of luck, pardon me, but you know what I mean? Like, like, come on, don't, don't be that kid. So get a stick strung, talk to Rob Warren, then go buy another head and a mesh kit and replicate it and, and give it a try. It's because every goalie should really have three sticks. So parents, I apologize, but this is my recommendation. Every goalie should have three sticks. One, they have an A stick right? It's their game day stick. It's their favorite. It's their go-to. Then they have a B stick. And the B stick is the stick that they use in practice a lot. Um, and, and it's close to their A stick. Sometimes they're, they're exactly the same, but it's the one that takes the biggest beating, right? Um, and then, but the A stick is the one they're going to save for game day, right? And then they have a C stick, and the, and the C stick is is can be a couple things. One, it can be just like the other sticks. So like if you have a um, an eclipse head, and you've got twelve diamond mesh, and you've got you know three shooting strings, and it, you whatever, like then you could have that all the way down, all the way across. But a lot of times, what the C stick is, it's something new that they want to try. And maybe it's the one they learned how to string on their own. Uh, maybe it's the one that you're trying to you instead of just three shooters, right? Like whatever. Um, so, but then they're going to use that stick in practice. They're going to use that stick in warm ups, so it gets beaten in. Uh, they're going to be, you know, trying something new. But again, they have that A stick for game day. So that's my recommendation for sticks: is that you got three sticks. But first and foremost, listen, understand that just don't be shipping off a goalie stick all the time right? Like, um, as Joel Rose writes, it's fun to learn how to string a stick. You know, you can watch your favorite TV show and you can, you know, there's something really cathartic about doing things with your hands. And I really don't think that's just from somebody who's handy. Like I love to paint and do home reno stuff and, you know, and, and I love models and things like that. But I, I believe everybody has that in them, right? So, so I want to make, but I just want to make sure that, you know, the idea here is you're, you're just not finding a guy who can string sticks and then that means they can do a goalie stick because then it's just a disaster, right? Because it's not just about like having a pocket that doesn't give up a rebound, right? There's a balance. And I go through this inside lacrosse goal university a bit with our clients. You know, it's, it's, but there's a lot more, there's more to it than just finding a guy who can string a stick. Okay. So, uh, so I want to make sure we, we just get that home. Um, so, oh, Rob, oh, Rob Warren, there you are, buddy. Rob Warren, I'm sorry, guys, I'm just looking, I'm scrolling through some comments here. Rob Warren, who just chimed in, good to see you, Rob. Rob, I'm sending you a lot of business, man. You owe me like a beer or something. Um, to answer one of the questions, I can string your goalie sticks. I was also a hockey goalie before starting to play lacrosse as a goalie. Cool, very cool. Um, so good stuff. So Rob's been our guy, and um, uh, so that's really good. David Wenworth, hello, sir. Rob, thanks for thanks for lurking in there, guys. So Rob Warren in the house. All right. Um, so next question. All right. Next question. Um, and you know what I think I'm going to do here? I'm going to skip the last question and I'm going to read an email that I got from one of uh, one of our lacrosse goal university parents uh, this week. And I thought I would read it and go through it. And I'm going to I'm going to keep the names out of it uh, so to 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 keep things um, <laughs> to protect the innocent. Right. Um, but I, I wanted to. I wanted to read this because this is kind of when people say like, oh, I'm looking for a, like a local goalie coach or should I join Lacrosse Goal University or work with you? I'm like, listen, Lacrosse Goal University is not always a fit for everybody. Working with someone like me is not always a fit. And I'm the first one to tell you, right? So when, when someone calls me and books a, books a breakthrough call and, and they, want it, they want to work with me, sometimes I tell them like we're not a fit. And so, but I thought I'd read this email because what this email is – it's the it's a copy of an email from a uh, a local goalie coach to this mom about her goalie, all right. And, and so um, so this goalie um, I can't remember the age exactly of this goalie, but I think they're like uh, junior high, right? Um, 
like they may be going into high school next year, but this goalie is new, uh, but loves the sport, like loves the position and mom wants the goalie to be better. And like all our good moms and dads do, which is cool. Right. So let me read this to you. And then I'm going to go back and I'm just going to make some, I'm going to just comment on it. Okay. So, um, so it's like, Hey, so your goalie has all the basic mechanics down and looks like he could eventually be better than average to good. When we warm up and I tell him where the shot is going, he looks decent. Even when I don't tell him and shoot to various areas, he does fine. However, more times than not, his first instinct is to get on his heels and lean backwards or just outright step back. That could be a few things, but whatever the reason, it's not good. He looks timid sometimes, and that cannot be happening if he wants to be good at the position. And I'm going to I'm going to talk about that. Can that change? I've seen rising freshmen who are like this go on to be damn good. He has to keep progressing and see a thousand shots a week. I question that, but anyway. Reps are huge. If he wants to be good, he needs tons of reps. I wouldn't say he's athletic. So to get better, he needs to really put in a lot of work. Um, and so an athlete doesn't have to work as hard, but that can produce a weak mindset. He needs to be mentally tough and practice a lot. One thing he has going for him is he loves the game. His fast twitch muscles are pretty good. I was telling him the shot will be off stick high and I would shoot it very fast. I was also very close and he'd still get to it. That goes for pretty much every, everywhere. But if I shoot a bounce shot at him, he's terrible. He was getting better at getting out to a bounce shot, but he needs to be told every time. His first instinct is to let the ball play him. He needs to play the ball and read the trajectory. His throwing can be better, but his top hand needs to be halfway up the stick. He holds his hands too low, making the stick heavy up top, and it results in his throws going way too high. His throws need to be better, be either a line drive or at an arc to get over the opposition sticks, not bloop balls. I taught him how to throw better and how to go about making saves to all areas. If he remembers everything and keeps doing them, he will improve drastically. One thing that will help is have someone get behind him while they're both facing the wall. The shooter throws it against the wall and he has to react quickly. That is real good for developing instinct. I guess that's it. Okay, first, I'm gonna touch on that last thing first because that last drill, is bullshit. Pardon me, guys. I, I hate it. Just comes out of me sometimes. Here's the thing. This goalie, all right, is a good kid, right? And any of you guys who coach, we love working with good kids, right? We'd rather work with a good kid than a not so good kid. You know what I mean? Like a bad kid, you know. And I'm talking not skill level. I'm talking attitude, right? So when I hear about a goalie like this, I'm like, hey, this is great. This is a kid who wants to be there. That's really really cool. So we can do a lot with that kid. But a couple things that really bothered me about this email, but, I, but I, I wanted to share it because this is what's typical, right? This is what's typical across the country. And this is what ends up people kind of getting to me and learning more. And because I just want to set you straight. So here's the thing. So, so one of the things that this coach is doing that I, that I kind of, I feel like I pioneered this. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to take credit, but I feel like I did is this idea of like telling the, telling the goalie where the shot's coming from. Okay. So for my lacrosse goalie, university goalies, I put them through a, 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 a much, I recommend a more, a, a more in-depth process here, but I'll jump right to having a coach telling the goalie where the ball is going. The reason why we do this is because there's so much going on for a lacrosse goalie. There's so much to learn and they're, and they're worried about getting hit because they're unprotected. They're worried about getting hurt. When you tell the goalie where the ball is going, now they can focus on the stance, reading the shooter's stick, and then moving in front of the ball. All right, it's pretty cool like that, right? And so that's really, really good. And so that allows the goalie now to just focus on, you know, just moving properly in front of the ball. Now, the problem is that puts some pressure on the coach because the coach has to be able to hit the spots, right? But it allows a goalie to start to understand, to dictate a little bit about where the ball is going um, and, and then move in front of it. That's cool. Um, but the, the, the point the coach made here is, is that the, but more times than not, his first instinct is to get on his heels and lean backwards or just outright step back. That my friends is a sign of a goalie who is scared because I'll tell you what, when you are protected and this goes back to our hockey 
part at the very first part of this podcast. When you go back, when you're when you're protected like a hockey goalie, you don't see hockey goalies usually like running away from a puck, right? They will do that when they're outmatched. Like you, if you see like a tenth, a ten year old kid getting shot on by like a sixteen year old kid, you may see a goal, a hockey goalie shy out of the way. But for the most part, you don't see that because they're protected, right? And so that's really important to understand. So when you see a goalie doing that, right? Um, you know, when the coach says that could be a few things, but whatever the reason, it's not good. It's not a few things. It's one thing, right? It's, they're not protected. They don't feel safe, right? And when that goalie doesn't feel safe and their brain goes into like high beta waves, they're running out the door, dude. They don't want to be there. They're not thinking about how to move in front of the ball. But why? Because they're worried about cleaning their underwear at the end of practice, right? So let's, let's work on this, right? So it's not, it's not a few things. It's one thing, right? And yeah, it's not good. No shit. But as a coach, it's our job to fix it, okay? So he looks timid sometimes, and that cannot be happening if he wants to be good at the position. Okay, coach, what are you going to do so that that goalie doesn't act timid and he can learn? You guys hear me? Like, feel me getting my back up a little bit on this? This drives me crazy, okay? So yeah, no joke. It shouldn't be happening. All right. What are you going to do to fix it? Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to back the, up the shots. We're going to use tennis balls. We're maybe going to put more, sh- we'll put a shoulder pad on this kid or maybe some elbow pads. Like there's no, this is not science. Okay. So this is common sense, but a lot of co- lacrosse coaches, coaches don't have common knowledge and it drives me nuts. Okay. Um, so can that change? This is the email. Can that change? I've seen rising freshmen who are like this go on to be damn good. Really? Right? Like, really? Well, what did they do? Did they just tough it out? Because what I hate seeing is I hate seeing the goalies that just tough it out. Right? Like, you know, what I see in the college ranks, and just so you guys know this, right? Division one goalies are not fearless. Right? Just this last week, I was working with a Division one's women's goalie who was so full of bad flaws. I, I was just shocked. Right? So the quality, the potential for the quality improvement, there's so much there, guys. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. Okay? So, all right. So back to the email. He has to keep progressing and see 1,000 shots a week. Reps are huge. If he wants to be good, he needs tons of reps. Not if they're crap and not if they're coming from you. Right? And what I mean is this, this coach. If you're just giving him, if you're just shooting balls at this goalie, they're never going to get better right? They're always going to be timid. They're going to be fearful. And what most coaches hope for is that something's going to all of a sudden snap in this kid and they're going to all of a sudden be good. No, that's not how this works, right? So, so putting a ton of reps at this goalie is a recipe to basically beat this kid out of the sport, right? Now, if you have quality reps, right? And you back it out, back it off and then come at it a different way. Keep that goalie safe and protected. Then you're going to get something out of this goalie, but just beating your head with a brick, right? It's not smart, right? So that's, that's the reps are not the advantage. And, and there's coaches out there that go to like, Oh, you just got to suck it up. You just got to get tough. No, you get in the cage then, right? You get in the cage. Okay. Let's see it. Right. So anyway, um, uh, I wouldn't say he's athletic, so to get better, he needs to really put in a lot of work. Well, what work is that? A lot of times, the best work a lacrosse goalie can do is not even in the cage, right? It's in the weight room, right? It's going for a run. It's doing parkour or gymnastics or playing another sport or, you know, playing soccer or maybe, you know, I like football, but I hate the concussions, right? But anyway, um, um, so, so this drives me nuts because the coach says an athlete doesn't have to work as hard but that can produce a weak mindset. What the hell is that? That means nothing. Like that's ridiculous. All right. So, um, the goalie needs to be mentally tough and practice a lot. Okay. But a goalie is only, you know, mentally tough means, all right, what does that mean? Survive your practice, right? Because I'll tell you, a goalie doesn't have to be mentally tough surviving my practice and they're going to be mentally tough because of it. Right. I don't want kids having to survive my practice because right? like, that's just not, that's not what we're trying to do here. Okay. Um, so one thing he has going for him is he loves the game. Yeah. Not if you beat it out of him. Um, his fast twitch muscles are pretty good. That's cool. So, so, you know, the email here shows like, you know, that this goalie has fast twitch potential, which is great. That's awesome. Okay. So let's not ruin it coach. Um, 
Um, and so what's kind of cool is that when you, when you get a young goalie, a new goalie and they're, you know, they're somewhat athletic and they're fast and twitchy is, you know, if they're feel safe, now they can start to show a little bit of their body's innate ability to get in front of the ball. Right. And that's really, really cool. All right. So, so it sounds to me like this goalie has that innate ability. Right. And so, you know, if a goalie is, is, is twitchy, you know, then we got something to work with here, which is really, really cool. Okay. Um, um, so, so okay, he goes, but big letters, but if I shoot a bounce shot at him, he's terrible. Well, whose fault is that coach? Right? So listen, learning a bounce shot. Okay. First and foremost, guys, bounce shots are how many bounce shots have you seen scored in a game? Okay. Um, bounce shots are, you know, yes, they happen and they're rare, but they're really not, you know, they're probably maybe. 2% of the shots a goalie sees, right? But in practice, you know, so how much time do you spend doing them? But then also in what environment do you see them? They're a hard thing to stop. So if you're not practicing them, a goalie doesn't even have a chance to be better, okay? So let's let's make sure that, that you know, when I see a goalie and he's horrible at something, if I see an athlete and they're horrible at something, I'm not blaming that kid. I, I would never say, oh, he's horrible at bounce shots. Well, he's never really done them. Right, and what have you done, coach, to help him be better? Right, let's think of it that way. Um, he was getting better at getting out to a bounce shot, but he needs to be told every time. Here's the thing, guys: bounce shots are difficult, and if your goalie does not feel protected, they're not going to get out in front of them. Right, because most bounce shots, where do they go? Where do they hit you? Somewhere on the body. Right, and if you're not protected, you're not going to put that in front of the ball. Right. So that's 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 a big deal here to me, and this coach is really missing the missing it uh, in a big big way. Um, he needs to play the ball. Um, his first instinct is to let the ball play him. Well, yeah, because he's worried about getting hurt, right? He's not confident over the ball because he's not protected. He was getting better at getting out to bounce, but he, um, he needs to play the ball and read the trajectory. Well, again, only if he's protected. Now his throwing can be better, but his top hand so. All the stuff about throwing, that is just repetition, repetition, repetition. It's understanding like, okay, how does the stick work? Maybe the pocket is also limiting for him. If that pocket's too deep, then he's not going to make a great outlet pass, and that's really important. So the, when when the coach starts talking about, you know, how these balls are like bloop balls and, you know, and, and how he taught him to throw better and how to go about making saves all areas, but, you know, this is all repetition. And a lot of times a coach like this expects the goalie to learn, but doesn't put the goalie in a position to learn. Okay. And so I want to make sure that we're really, um, that we're, we're spot on with that, with a goalie. Um, so what for, what, what problem is, is, um, what bothers me here in this email? Uh, and, and also the recommendation at the very end about how like, this is going to be the saving grace for this goalie. One thing that will help is, is have someone get behind him while they're both facing the wall. The shooter throws it against the wall and he has to react quickly. That's real good practice for developing instinct. No, that's real good practice for developing horrible, horrible moves in front of the ball. Because what happens is a goalie like this has, they have not wired in the proper movement to the ball, right? We A goalie who has spent thousands of reps moving properly in front of the ball, right? When you put them in front of do that quick react drill, and unfortunately I've seen these, I've seen pro goalies showing, oh yeah, we're going to do this drill. And you see a kid like, and they're just stabbing at the ball. That is not, re it, all it's doing is reinforcing bad habits. So do not do that drill. This goalie, there's a thousand other things we can do this goalie before we get to that drill. Okay. All right. And, and so that's when that gets, when that's like the last bit of advice from this coach, you know, I, for all the goalie coaches out there, first and foremost, I want to send love and appreciation because you're working with, um, probably one of the most underserved positions in sports is the lacrosse goalie. So I don't want to be bad mouthing a coach. I appreciate the time that they're even spending with this goalie. But I'm like, really? Like, there's 
so many resources out there to help you be a better coach. And one of them is all my, is my site and all the stuff I do for you. I just hate that this is still out there, right? And it's going to be out there for a long time. And for most of the people listening to me, this is probably the coach that you're working with, right? Um, or at least the type of coach. So, so I want to, I want to encourage you that like to think through these recommendations from a coach, right? Um, and like I said, like this parent, they've actually, they're now members of lacrosse goal university. Um, and so, so, and, and I'm able to speak to this. And one of the things I do with my goalies is a lot of my goalies work with a local coach and I'm able to translate some things and say, listen, okay, I get it. I get what this coach is writing you, but here's the other things you need to be working on, right? Here are the other things that's going to be the biggest bang for the buck right now, now for you, because I don't want you to be good this season, I want you to be good in four years. Like granted, we're going to make you better for this season, but I want a goalie who's going to have a nice, long, successful career in the sport of lacrosse who then will turn around and coach some other goalies, right? Because my motto is changing the game of lacrosse one game at a time, or sorry, one goalie at a time. So changing the game of lacrosse one goalie at a time and one coach at a time, right? And that's why I do these things. All right. So anyway, um, I really appreciate the question. Uh, I really appreciate being able to, 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 I got permission to read the email online. So hopefully I didn't get anybody into trouble, but, um, but if that's what you're dealing with uh, for your goalie, you can see how, you know, your goalie can be getting limited by the coach they're working with locally. Right. So people always ask me, should I work with a local coach? And I said, well, I'd love it if you worked with me, if that works out for you. Right. But because I can do a ton of stuff with your goalie from a distance, but you know, if you got a goal, if you got a local guy or girl and they're good and they're not just rehashing stuff that they've heard that's been rehashed for over 40 years, then, you know, it's like uh, maybe that'll work for you. Sometimes just having a goalie be with somebody locally that understands another goalie, it's like, ah, you know, it's like this, it's nice, it's this good relief, right? But if you don't have that, then, you know, it might be, it might be time to look elsewhere and it may come my way or, or, you know, whatever, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Right. So, whew, man, I gotta just calm down a little bit now. It just gets my back up. Right. All right, everybody, listen, I really, I want to appreciate everybody who stayed with me for an hour. Holy smokes. We're on for an hour. I got two minutes to turn around and do my next podcast. Right. So the next podcast, um, we're going to talk about it. So my raising high performing athletes podcast, which is on Facebook. Also, if you find me on Facebook at Olympic Jonathan Fan, right? Olympic Jonathan Fan, uh, follow me there. Um, I post it there. But we also got the Apple Podcast for raising high performance. I just I really appreciate all the comments. Everybody who joined. Stacy Mullins also joined. Mike Simmons, hello sir. Uh, Michelle Bukema, Jason Dillon, Joseph Mike. Wow, everybody's in. And Greg Slapham Lapham, last one in. Um, I, I want to thank everybody for your comments and your good love. Do me a favor, like this, share it with your goalie, share it with another parent, um, share it with a coach, invite them to join the lacrosse goal, creating the lacrosse goal of the future, but make sure they answer the three questions or they're not getting in. All right. That's the deal. So I'll see you guys in the group this week. If you, if you got anything for me, if you got a, if you got a question, if you want, if you're thinking about joining lacrosse goal university, uh, if, and you want to start now, email me coach Edwards at lacrosse goalie tips.com, or you can book a breakthrough call lacrosse goalie tips.com forward slash call. Right. And just book a, a slot on my calendar and we'll get you going. All right. But uh, as always, everybody, thanks so much. We're going to create a lot of great momentum for 2020, for that spring of 2020. And hey, listen, if your goalie's playing now and they're out and they're playing tournaments, make sure you're posting photos in the group. Uh, I want this to be the best damn group on the, on the internet. And uh, so thanks, everybody. And I'll see you next week. Cheers. <laughs>